Okay, welcome everybody. I am uh, excited to introduce episode 28 of Piper's Dojo TV. I'm here live with one of our uh, best students, John McCain, and we're going to go over a little performance that he's got here today. So in just a second, we'll get started with today's episode. So I want to introduce John uh, to you. He's a really good student. John, can you give us a little background about yourself, what we're doing here, and uh, what uh, and what we're doing today? Like, just uh, go for it. Sure. Um, I live in Fort Worth, Texas. I've been competing seriously. This is my fourth year of serious competition. I played a few years before then. Um, I'm a grade three piper. I have played this tune in grade three um, jig competition for judges a couple of times. And the feedback that I've got, gotten from the judges, the first time I played it, I played it, um, the notes really even, and I was dinged for it being very unmusical. So I wrote in the, um, this is, so if you see any errors in the sheet music, they're mine. So I wrote in some of the, um, sort of the, some of the cut and dot, and I'm trying not to play it even. And I've also, um, got some criticism or critique I should say the second part as far as some of the um, playing it technically well and then the, the last comment I got on a, a competition I won was a judge sort of smiled at me and said you know when you know the notes you play it pretty well so I guess I've had some note errors in there also yeah I think that's one of the big things that's <laughs> interestingly gets kind of overlooked by a lot of competitors right which is um, and, and I have young students where we really struggle with this problem, which is there's a lot of stuff going right, but at the end of the day, the player doesn't get through without like some sort of giant problem of some kind, like maybe going off the tune, maybe, you know, uh, a giant choke or something like that, right? Like uh, it's interesting how Sometimes we totally forget that even happened, but that's going to be a major factor to not doing as well as you want to in the contest. Um, yep. You know, so uh, I think that's very interesting. And um, so that's good. So you've written in some expression points here on the music here today, like maybe a little cut F. Um, and so is that going to be cut, John, or is that going to be more nuance or what's the plan there? Well, I, I'm trying to exaggerate the cut on it a little bit. Um, when I started doing this, and I listened to some older recordings and other pipers, so that's that's where I got the, the cut expressions. They're not written by Donald McLeod. And when I've done this, I've gotten really good feedback as far as the mu musicality, so I am trying to cut them. I'm not trying to have a super short note like you'd have in a 2-4 march, but I am trying to make it noticeable. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, why don't we uh, go from here and have a listen to the recording and see what happens.
Awesome. I love the fade out in the audio recording as well. So John, as we'll often do in class together, like I'll first ask you, like, what are your thoughts on that performance? Um, I'm working on rhythmic accuracy and trying to hit the beat and I'm, I'm still leading the beat. I'm still in front of the beat, which is my tendency. I think I've improved where I really notice there's a problem is when I do the E doubling, I mean the C doubling in the second part that I'm finishing the doubling before the beat even hits. And I didn't realize I was doing that when I was playing. Good. So uh, for the people listening who don't necessarily know exactly what we mean by rhythmic accuracy, like, uh, can you explain what you mean by that? Like, I, I understand we want to hit the beat, which is fine, but like drill into exactly what you've been focusing on. And, um, you know, for example, John, I think it's fair to say you're a lot better now than you were uh, when we first started talking about it as well, right? Oh, yes, yes. And, and for me, and in most tunes, and this is similar that, that we basically have a G grace note in most cases, or in this tune, sometimes the high A is um, that should be lined up right, right on the beat, particularly on the first beat of the measure. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, so we're really talking about the exact thing that should go on the click of the metronome uh, to actually be perfectly lined up. And um, it's interesting, John, because I think even in this recording, uh, you're actually pretty precise with how you're playing relative to the beat, but it's almost always just that little tiny bit ahead of the mark, right? Exactly, it is. Uh, and that's the big thing that we have to get rid of because I'm pretty sure it's not your actual intention, right, uh, to take, say, this, G, this really small G grace note on the F. It's probably not your actual intention to play that a little bit before the beat, right? Like... Like what? No, I'm I'm trying to hit the click with the um with the, with a short sharp you know uh, G grace note. Yeah, like it's uh it's sort of like a complete eclipse, right? We want the grace note and the click to perfectly align. That's our intention, but then that's not actually being manifested in in the real world, and that's something that we really work on because, of course, control over what we're playing is the name of the game. Let's see if let's just play back a little bit again, just so people can hear what we mean. See if you can hear John just leading the beat ever so slightly here. Yeah, especially these cut notes here, John, right? You can hear the F distinctly before the click, can't you? Um, and right, that, yes. You know, and if it were perfectly aligned, uh, that would be you know, that would be what we wanted. And, and I agree. What about, um, you know, before we get too much deeper, like what about uh, some of the good aspects of this performance? Like there's one particular thing I think you're doing really well here, which is you're getting a great quality of sound out of your instrument. You know, any, com any comments on how you're doing that so well or what your approach is to getting such a good sound? Well, I do think about it a lot, and I do a lot of experiments to try to try to get the best sound possible as far as, you know, the components of it. But, you know, for, for one of the things I've, or several of the things I've learned from Dojo is one is to, you know, is really good instrument maintenance, which I had really good habits beforehand anyway. But that's essential. And then I've worked with a manometer for, for about, I don't know, three or four months. And, and that's pretty dramatically helped my sound quality, especially the, the part of, in the sweet spot on the chantery and always trying to play to that spot. Yeah, so what is this manometer that you speak of? I mean, I know what it is, but... Um... Well, it's a, it's a, a series of, of clear plastic tubes that <laughs> the water is in, and, and the, which I, I purchased from you and Carl at the dojo, but I guess that's a shameless plug. Nice. But so, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, you, what you do is you hook it up to your middle drone and um, at least that's, that's what I, I use is the middle drone and um, it pushes the water to a certain level. And so it, it works on several, you can, you can use it for several things. You can calibrate drone reads and, and, um, and do other things like that, but you want to, you know, obviously have the water level as level as possible as you're playing the tune, but also like this graphic shows, you can find where the, most vibrant part of your uh, your uh, chantery it is 
And so you're not just arbitrarily just trying to hold the water still. You're actually trying to hold it still in one certain place, which is where the um, the reed has this, the most harmonics to it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm with you 100 percent on that. And um, it's really exciting that because I, I seem to remember you've always had a pretty good sense and sensitivity for tone and what good tone should be. But it's interesting that you've really used the manometer to really help skyrocket you to that next level where, you know, there's really not much you can criticize about your blowing and about your overall bagpipe quality. So you've really made it so you can just focus in on improving your playing uh, and really work on that, which I think is really kind of interesting and kind of, uh, kind of exciting, yeah. So, um, so it's all about finding that sweet spot on the reed. And, and you can see there's quite a differential between the sweet spot uh, and the choke line meaning there's a wide range of different pressures that you could play on your chanter reed. Um, it's a question of picking the right one, which is that sweet spot line, that maximum line before bad sounds start to happen, right? You pick that line and the manometer gives you a target. So literally, when you play your pipes, it's almost like tonal target practice and it really works, right? I think that's the, uh, you know, I think I think your recording is a testament to that. So, so anyway, I think it, yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah, it, it, it does develop good habits, and and the difference between my choke line and the and the sweet spot is it is this, I don't know it's eight or ten inches. I'm not sitting by the manometer, so I can't measure it. But it, it's not just an inch or two. It's a it's a very wide range. It and I was definitely playing on sort of the back end of that, and it taught me to play you know much more you know full or you know put a, a you know bigger volume volume of air in my pipes and it also gave me um sort of a, a way of developing really good habits to try to you know ingrain that so i so i don't have to think about it that much anymore right you know so it sounds like you know it sounds like you're playing on a regular basis and it sounds like you know uh, it sounds like you're doing a lot of investigation on your own into things and uh you know yes. I, I really think that's good i think you know immersing yourself uh, in bagpipe music, right? A little bit all the time. That's what we're really advocating here, and it's been really exciting. I think I'd like to maybe call it in there. Why don't we have another listen through your tune just to kind of wrap things up, John? But thanks very much for joining us and uh, helping us put together this show. Uh, thank you, Andrew. All right, here we go one more time. See if you can listen for the great quality of the bagpipe that we're talking about and also some of the subtle rhythmic things, right? Leading the click of the metronome, not 100% on like we're working on becoming, right? Uh, and that's going to take a lot of practice. Here we go, the seagull one more time from uh, Piper John McCain.
so it's really cool. I mean, it's just, you know, the early rhythms are really jumping out to me as kind of being a habit for you, John, that you're going to have to work on. There's a couple little yes. things in there, you know, like a crossing noise or two, which I, you know, which is part of the reason why it's so important to focus on rhythm, because how many of those crossing noises are just kind of just a little tiny bit of confusion between your two hands? Uh, because you're not quite manifesting that uh, perfect rhythm, right? So, yeah. uh, so Absolutely. there you go. Uh, so, uh, John, thanks very much again for joining us. Uh, we publish these shows on uh, Facebook, of course, but then YouTube if you want to subscribe to us there, and in podcast form as well if you want to check us out as you drive around. And we'll get better about not having technical glitches in the future, but uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the show and i suppose that'll do us for now so john thanks again and if you guys have any comments or you want to um you know send over your own suggestions you can of course comment on this video on facebook and youtube and whatever and i'm sure john will be checking out those comments as well as us so we'll get back to you and we'll make all sorts of good things happen so until next time uh thank you for watching piper's dojo tv and we'll see everybody soon